What's up guys and gals and welcome to the first episode in our early access preview of Subnautica. This is a game that I'm very very excited about and have been in fact quite twitterpated about because it's a game that it displays something that I love, which is the ocean. As a geologist, you study the ocean a lot. In your college classes, you will take oceanography classes, you will take classes about underwater paleontology, you will take loads and loads of underwater classes, hydrological classes, things like that. I have scuba divers in my family, I very much enjoy snorkeling, and I always wanted to get scuba certified, I just never quite had the time just yet. But Subnautica is a crafting game where you have to survive on an aquatic world, a la water world, after your ship crashes on it. There will be violent creatures that try and eat us. We will practice our breaststroke and our freestyle a lot. I'm very, very excited about showing this game off. So without further ado, let's not waste too much time. Let's jump straight into the game. How about it? There's two different modes. You can go with freedom mode right now. I think freedom mode just allows you to swim around without having to worry about suffocating. Whereas normal survival mode is where you're going to be crafting all your gear and trying to make yourself more survivable and more armored as you go through the game. Let's go ahead and do it. Second century, humanity is beginning to colonize space. Before colony ships arrive, habitation vessels are appointed terraforming missions. The Aurora was one such vessel. During its descent, the Aurora was struck by a mysterious energy pulse, resulting in catastrophic hull failure. A single life pod jettisoned prior to impact. You were in that life pod. If our character is anything like me, I'm assuming he was just like sitting in the like life pod waiting for something terrible to happen. I don't do well with flying. Not a big fan. Not a big fan. Love running, love walking, love swimming. Eh, flying. I'd rather stay on the ground being the monkey that I am. Anyways, over here we got our fire extinguisher. It's actually a gun. I can't wait till they put that in the game. But as of right now, there are a few things you want to know about Subnautica. In the bottom left hand corner, you've got your health, you've got your sustenance, so your food, and you've got your hydration levels. On the left hand side you've got the O2 meter. I've played this game quite a bit and I've built everything in the game except for the ultimate submarine because I couldn't figure out where you get that pesky unobtainium and I didn't want to look it up. I wanted to leave it blind so that the discovery would be real. But I'm excited about playing this game with you. We have a fabricator over here. Very very good at lying. Also very very good at creating anything that you could ever want from base elements right here. So you can make everything from like calcium to silicone to well the glass is an amalgam of quartz and sand. But anyways, you got carbon, you can make bleach, batteries. There's the different foods that you can cook from all the different fish that you can catch along the way. There's equipment like dive tanks, you've got yourself some fins, you've got yourself flares, beacons, whatever you could really want. And down here's the really fun stuff. Later on, they're going to add it so that you have to document the creatures on the planet, kind of like a collectum game. It's where the DNA transfuser is probably going to come in. You've got a repair tool right here for repairing your submarines. The constructor, think of it like an RTS. The constructor is essentially like this big platform, well, a little platform that you can stand on and make submarines from flashlights, dive knives. We've got sea glides. Essentially, there's a lot of stuff to make in this game. Now, because the game does not have a save feature, I'm going to be playing like a five-hour block of this tonight. And as many episodes as I record, that's as many as we get. But be aware that if the game ends a Abruptly, it's because I crashed and it deleted all my stuff because there's no saves. Obviously, it's very, very easy to get up and running. I can do it in under about eight minutes, I think, is how long it took me to build everything on this list a little bit ago, just like racing my ass off to do it. No commentary, obviously, but you know. We've got our frizzled out. This is actually a toilet right here. They added the harness because after a chilly night, they found that people could not keep themselves attached to the toilet. It just kind of like, I'm not sure how it works. It says it's got a fixate button and a launch button right there. I assume that you push launch right when you're ready to go and then like you get settled in and you go with fixate and maybe it like scans your body and your colon for whatever you're going to release and then you hit the launch button and it sucks it right on out of you. Funsies. No, that's actually just like a safety seat. I'm being, I'm being foolish right now. We need to track down some food. And so diving out of the bottom of our pod here, those little alligator things are dicks and they bite you in the face and everywhere else they can possibly get their teeth on you, so we're going to avoid them. They also collect metal. They have a fascination with metal. I'm not really sure what's up with that. I'm sure the lore later on will talk about it. Down here you'll see a little bit of scrap metal. We're going to take that. That's going to be ours. We're going to grab some sand, maybe two handfuls of sand so that we can turn it into silica later. Actually, let's go for how much do I have right now? I need six sand to make some flippers. There it is, six sand. So we can go up and make some flippers. The quartz down here, now this is going to be one of those things that as a geologist, you should be able to get all the quartz you need from the sand. Sand is comprised almost entirely of SiO4, whereas quartz, as a substance, is comprised as well of SiO4. So, 
The thing about sand is that sand is just the crushed up particles of rocks that have made it to the ocean after spending eons just kind of floating down rivers, creeks, and tributaries. You'll have like a minor amount of maybe like some magnesiates and maybe some iron up in there. Every now and again you'll find yourself some biotite or some muscovite that's in very, very small flaky form. But by and large, sand by the time it gets to the ocean is very, very fine, very, very small, and almost entirely made up of oxygen and silica. So, as of right now, I feel like quartz and sand are kind of like overlapping resources, but they treat them as two separate things so that you can make glass out of them. Obviously, I think you can turn glass into quartz by recrystallizing it, but you would need like some kind of smelter or something. I'm not sure the fabricator would be able to do it. Maybe that's why they've collected them as two separate substances, even though their chemical constituencies should be fairly similar. Very, very similar by the time you get to the ocean. If it was sand you found in a creek, then I'd be like, eh, it's probably got a lot more magnesiates and kind of iron oxides than you would expect. Don't bite me. It looks like he just farted ink into the water. Oh well, I'll take that over him biting me. We need to get ourselves some metal so that we can make some dive tanks. Very, very important with where we're at right now. So let's go down and see if we can get, oh, I think four metal will do it for two more dive tanks. Our oxygen's at 50% right now. Oh, Oh, he's gonna fight us. They collect they collect the metal, like I told you. They they are infatuated with metal, so we probably should get out of the way. I'm gonna catch this peeper on the way by too. Come here, peeper. Got him. Can I grab any of these little guys too? We need to make ourselves a dinner. Once they run you off a little ways, they seem to, you know, lose aggro and drop their radius, but whatever. It's all good. I think what I'd like to do is catch some more fish real fast so that we can eat as well. There will be little halite crystals around, so if you search along the edges of these rock outcrops and you look, do you see this square right here? That should be, it should be salt or halite, which is just crystallized salt. I think that this one right here, there we go. I don't need more sand, I just need, uh, oxygen's at what? Oh, 10%. Let's go back up to the surface real fast. Ah, to the surface we go to refill our oxygen. Let's go back down. I'd like to come back with a little bit more salt so that we can feed ourselves. Later on, we'll be able to use the salt in order to combine it with calcium to make bleach, and then we can purify our water artificially. But for right now, we're just going to use it as a cooking resource. These right here, that's flint, which is metamorphosed chert. As of right now, though, we don't really need it. We can break these limestones right here. Limestone is made up of the calcareous dead bodies of critters. Now, every critter, a lot of critters under, I'm not going to say every, but a lot of critters that live underwater have a calcareous test. A test is just a fancy scientific name for a shell. That calcareous test is made up of CaCO3, which is soluble in salt water. Now, once you put it in a saline solution, what will happen is it will melt over time, and limestone is that accumulation of just kind of that mushy calcium carbonate at the bottom of the sea. That's all that it is. After a while, it kind of gathers on the bottom. The parts that make it mushy will dissolve eventually, and you get this very, very hard stone at the bottom of the ocean called limestone. You can get a bunch of other types, too, that are made out of it. By, uh, by and large, that's what you're looking for. Now, we can make a dive knife right now, which is important because it allows us to crack into coral. Wouldn't recommend this in real life. Destroying coral probably gets you in trouble with the park ranger, but in this game, you can destroy the coral in order to get yourself calcium, or you get... You get the calcareous, you know, membranes, and I guess not membranes, you get the calcareous chunks of the coral, which you can then turn into elemental calcium. So that's up here if you were looking for it. But for right now, what we want to make, we have a whole bunch of silicone. I'm going to go ahead and use the silica to create ourselves two little lumps of silicone. We're going to make ourselves some dive flippers out of that so that we can swim a little bit faster for right now. It's not a super useful item. I'll probably stop using it in a little bit, but... It will make us swim faster for the time being until we can get ourselves a little frogman unit. Additionally, I'm going to actually need... Ooh, we need one more metal to make this work. Let's make our dinner first. I think that's the most important. So let's cook up these two peepers. There they go. And sorry, peeper. I'm going to have to do this to you. It's for the greater commonwealth. I apologize for the greater good of my mouth and also my stomach. We're going to eat those. They give you about 32 food apiece, and they give you 5 hydration. That should be enough to keep us going for a little while. You can see it at the bottom here. The fins are passive. They don't really help that much from what I can tell. Since we're not going to build our dive tanks right now, let's just make a knife. A knife is a very, very important thing if you're going to be going down underwater. A lot of divers die from getting tangled up in things. It happens more than you would think. My dad had a friend die in a diving accident that way. He was actually... He was blind diving, which is a very, very dangerous thing to do. He was certified to do it, but accidents happen. I mean, blind diving is a very, very dangerous pastime. It's like cave diving. Very, very dangerous. Accidents happen, and when people die, they accept the risks when they go down to the bottom of the ocean. But anyways, my dad's friend died in a scuba diving accident at the bottom of the ocean. Actually, he was a scuba trainer. Like, he was more experienced than most with, like, thousands of hours of dive time. You know what I mean? And just accidents happen. Accidents happen. He got tangled up in the murk and the mush at the bottom, and 
They never saw him again. They had to dredge him up with the police department later on. It was very, very unfortunate. It was in the newspapers and everything. But anyways, I forget what I was talking about before then, but diving is a dangerous pastime. Not necessarily like clear water diving like this. I mean, it still has its risks, but cave diving and blind diving, things happen. No matter how experienced you are, it's kind of like sometimes things happen with skydiving. It's a dangerous sport. Let's go ahead and crack these open for some calcium. I don't need that much calcium right now, but we'll take it just in case because later on in the game, sometimes the cal like the little coral nodes, sometimes they bug out and they stop working properly and they stop breaking when you hit them with a knife. I've had it happen to me. It's a bug that I reported. I am helping out with the early access as much as I can by reporting the bugs that I come across, but I need a metal. That's what we were going to come down and get so that we can make some dive tanks. We need four metal in total. We have two metal right now. I'd like to make two tanks. The tanks do use up some of your inventory space, so I would highly recommend you not take too many of them. It depends what you're up to. Ah, here we go. That'll do right there. That'll do right there. And is that four? That's four. Now, the other things that we need... Do we have zinc with us? We're going to need some zinc. We do not. So let's get ourselves some zinc real fast before we go back up. Ooh, copper. That's actually a rare drop. Doesn't go down very often, but you should make use of it if you can find it. It's... I would harvest all the nodes that you see, honestly, because you don't see them very often. Copper comes up every now and again, and it's easier to get it just kind of like along the way than it is to try and get it when you're actively looking for it. If what you're looking for is copper, eh, it'll take you a little while to dig it out of the walls, but you'll get it eventually, but I prefer to just accumulate it over time and maybe leave it at the bottom of the ocean underneath my pod over there. Let's grab some more zinc. We can combine that with carbon. In order to make us... Oh, our inventory's full. Watch out. You see those little red things right there? They shoot mines at you. Or they shoot these little fish that explode when they run up on you. And they will wound you and they will hurt you. I'll show you one up close in just a little bit. I call them poppers. I don't know what they're called. But I call them poppers because they're sort of dangerous. They are not to be confused with jalapeno poppers. Which are both delicious and delightful. Watch out. What did I need? Do I have any... We have purple mushrooms. So we have enough to make one battery right there. The purple mushrooms, we can turn those into carbon. Which is what we're going to do. Since it's nighttime, we should get back on the boat anyways. Nothing bad happens at nighttime as of right now. It's just that it's hard to see and it doesn't make for a very good viewing experience for you as a viewer. I'm going to make two dive tanks right now. There's dive tank number one. And there's dive tank number two. That's going to give us a minute and a half underwater, which is a lot of time to work with. That should be more than enough to take us into the mid-game. Later on, we'll get a submersible, a submarine, and some other fun stuff. But for right now, we're going for the sea glide, which helps you get down to depth a lot faster. We need metal, battery, and silica to make it, or silicone to make it work. Oh, unfortunately, I don't have the silicone that I need. I also need carbon, which I can make right now. So let's get the battery out of the way, and then we'll worry about getting the silicone, and we'll worry about getting the metal. There it is. So we've got our battery made, and then the final thing that we need is metal and some silicone. Alright, so let's get in there. We're going to go after it. We should be able to find some metal down here. Oh, our ship is floating away. That's not good. Every now and again, it seems to untether itself and just sort of float freely. With these oxygen tanks, we have a lot more time to play around with, so we don't need to worry about suffocating quite so badly. Obviously, it is still, like, a concern. You should still, you know, think about it, but... It's not as big of an issue. Let's get into this limestone. We got a little bit of zinc right there. Another peeper down here. What is that? That's an air sac. I'll take him just because we're going to get hungry in a little bit and we probably need to feed our faces. Grab that peeper as well. Be careful about grabbing peepers at the men's room though. Grab a peeper at the men's room. You're probably going to get punched. There's the metal that we need. And then we just need a little bit more sand. How much sand do we have on us? We have a little bit of emery that I'm going to drop for right now because it's not a long-term resource that we need. Pay attention to your oxygen when you're looking at your little PDA underwater. Sometimes it'll get you in trouble. I'm going to go ahead and head back to the ship. I think we have all the things that we need right now in order to make our sea glide, which is going to be a lot of fun. The sea glide is going to allow us to just, like, skim around. And after we get the sea glide, you actually don't really need the flippers anymore, so I would just take them out of your inventory. I think it stacks, but don't quote me on it. I haven't checked the wiki on it just yet. With the fabricator, let's make ourselves a sea glide. We need to get the silicone going, though, first. There it is. Silicone will be lasered together by our fabricator, and then we'll be able to make our first sea glide. Very, very nice. Now, this in real life, these actually exist. They're called frogman units. They're actually sort of expensive, though, from what I remember. All it is is basically this little thing with handles, and you hold on to it. Some of them have an interior cabin so that you can stick your head up and, like, not be wet inside of it. Most of them are just like this little guy right here, though, but they're mostly for, like, underwater photographers and people like that who need to use their energy taking pictures and not swimming down. And basically, you just kind of hold on to it, and it goes put, 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 and it swims you around at a low velocity. In this game, it's actually pretty quick, though, so... Kind of a fun little device. Kind of a fun little device. I'm probably going to ditch a lot of this stuff that I'm carrying around with me at the bottom of the ocean right here. Ooh. 
we can fight him with our knife. How successful we're going to be, I couldn't tell you. Your knife does break after a while. There we go, we killed him. After you kill him, you can harvest carbon off of his body. We don't really need it, though, so his body's just going to, I guess, float off in that direction. And the underside of our escape pod is now that much safer for it. I'm going to grab this little... Oh, our inventory's full, never mind. So I'm going to try and get directly underneath our pod. And in so doing, I'm going to ditch the knife, the fins... This right here, the sea glide, I'm going to put that as our number one object. Actually, I'm going to keep the knife. Never mind. Let's keep the knife on us. I'm going to assign the knife as the number two slot. At the bottom right here, you've got the one through five slots. You just mouse over something and you press a number and it'll put it into your hot slots as soon as you'll want it. As soon as you'll want it. Normally, I know that I do blind playthroughs, but I wanted to actually have experience with this game when I went through to play it because I figured nobody wants to watch me fiddle around for 25 minutes trying to figure out where I get a battery from. So our flippers should stay here for the remainder of our stay on whatever we want to call this planet. I suppose we'll call it Aurora in honor of all the people that died on board the Aurora. If you swim over there, radiation will hurt you, and I don't really know how to get around that. I don't think you can. I found everything in the game except for unobtainium, which I haven't had any luck finding. I'll probably Google it later on just to make the playthrough more interesting. As of right now, we've got our frogman. So the next thing that we want to do... Let's harvest ourselves. Well, let's eat dinner first, and then what we're going to do after that is we're going to make ourselves some water. Let's go ahead and jump onto the escape pod. We need to create some dinner from the peepers and air sacs that we've been picking up along the way. We only have three salt, so I'll probably only make two of these. There we go. And so we've got two cooked peepers right there, I think. Right? Okay, so we're going to eat both of those. Those are both worth 32 health, or I'm sorry, 32 food apiece. When your health is regenerating, you lose food a little bit faster. So if you've lost blood or you've been wounded, be aware that you'll be losing your food, your sustenance right there. Your caloric intake will be going down quite a bit faster. As though, if you have full health, it doesn't go down very quickly. That's all that I'm trying to say right here as I stumble with my words. The air sac actually not going to be that useful. I think that for right now, I'll probably drop the zinc in here. Because we aren't going to need it for a while. It'll just hang out at the bottom right here. We can pick it up whenever we want it. Just to save inventory space. I'll probably do the same thing with the quartz. Sometimes it'll fall out of the bottom of your ship. Just be aware that if you can't find it, go down to the bottom underneath your ship and you'll be able to find it. What we want to do right now is we want to use salt. Actually, I dropped the stuff that I'm going to be using. Let's see here. Actually, no, I dropped the zinc. Okay, so the coral chunks. We need to turn that into calcium. So with the coral chunks, bam, we'll turn that into calcium real quick. And we need, eh, we only have the resources for one, so we'll create one bleach using calcium and salt. Just be aware that you should not mix bleach and ammonia, that could be quite fatal. So we've got our bleach, now all that we have to do is go to the food menu. Once we're in the food menu, we can use disinfected water. There it is, and so we'll make laser fed, I bet there would be a market for laser created water. I bet that there would be some rich guy out there that would want bottled laser water. It seems pretty awesome. I would name it something more cool, but anyways. Laser water has been acquired. We've now got our sustenance up a little bit higher. And what I want to do with the remainder of this episode is hunt metal. Some of these sea trenches can be good for it. As you go out towards the Aurora out this way... Where's the Aurora? There it is. It's a giant ship, and I already done gone and lost it. So if you wanted to find metal, I would go in the direction of the Aurora. Let's use our Frogman unit. It'll help us get around a little bit faster and save our oxygen. We'll skim along the bottoms down here just to keep an eye out for copper, just because I like to accumulate it a little bit. We also need some more halite or salt crystals along the way. You can find those usually along the sides of stone outcrops or along the sides of trenches. So if you can't find them, be aware they don't respawn either. So you will quickly pick clean the area around your little escape pod. Believe me when I say that. In one of my games, there was basically like nothing left. It was taking me a huge amount of effort just to find the things that I needed. All right, so we're down here. I don't think we need any more carbon for right now. I think we will, however, need more salt. So let's grab that. And then along the way, I think it would be a pretty good idea. There's the metal that we need right there. Let me get back up to the surface. We'll refill our oxygen real fast. We're only at 50%, so I wasn't that worried about it. But at the same time, I'd still like to... What's our inventory space looking like? It's looking okay. We need three metal for the next thing that we're going to build, as I recall, which is going to be our constructor. I'd like to get that done by the end of the episode. So that's going to take us like a battery. It's going to take us some glass, I think. A couple glass, and it's going to take us... Oh, I don't know. Let's grab this off the ground, though. I think we'll probably need two glass, a battery, and three metal, maybe. I don't really remember. You can also use this to skim across the surface if you're so inclined, or you were so submerged, I guess, since you, well... I don't know if you... Eh, it would come down to the way that you choose to. In three space, you've got to decide on a direction that's up. So for something to be inclined, I guess it would have to be at a pitch with regards to horizontal. 
Once you see that right there, it just pooped out our resources. They're falling out the bottom of our boat. So be aware that that can happen right there and just keep an eye on it. They should just fall to the bottom and hit the ground, but as far as I know, it should be okay. Let's go ahead and make ourselves some glass. I thought we had sand. Didn't I just grab sand? Maybe we were full up. Let me drop these coral chunks real fast. We can get those back later. So the sand's easy. It's not a big deal. Probably pick up a couple of... Ooh, that's going to be way too messy. Let's go ahead and pick some of this stuff up, and then we'll dump it on the bottom of the ocean here. When in doubt, dump it on the bottom of the ocean. It'll probably piss off the conservationists, but you know what? This planet hasn't been touched yet. It'll have to take one for the team for right now. We need quartz, and we need salt. Let me drop some more of these coral chunks. Those will float down to the bottom, or sink down to the bottom. I guess floating down to the bottom would be a major failure in terminology. Kind of an oxymoron to float down to the bottom. They would sink down to the bottom, I guess. We've got a little bit of sand now. We're going to make some glass out of that. There it is. Fabricate some glass very, very quickly. Awesome. And now that that's done, we're going to try and create this constructor right here. So we need a battery, which is comprised of zinc and carbon. I think I'm missing my zinc for right now, though, but there should be some down at the bottom here where we dumped it. There's some quartz. There's some quartz. Where's the zinc at? I know it's around here somewhere. There it is. So there's some zinc. We don't really have a lot of storage space, so I tend to just dump stuff below my ship, and then every now and again it, like, despawns or something. I don't know if that's due to memory allocations or what, but every now and again it is going to vanish on you. Be aware. So we're going to create our constructor. There it is. Very, very nice. Now that we have our constructor, we're going to take this outside with us, and we're going to right-click to deploy it where we want it. And I suppose that putting it right here is as good as any other spot. It's going to unfold, and now we can get on top of this platform... And we can play around with some of the vehicles that can be crafted with in the game. We can make a Cyclops, we can make a Sea Moth. I've made the Sea Moth and it's really, really awesome. I have no idea how to get Unobtainium for the Cyclops. I've got everything else, but I haven't found any Unobtainium. I assume it's in the deep sea area somewhere. But what we're going to strive for first is going to be creating the Sea Moth. The Sea Moth is important because it allows you to be inside of a submersible. It's a submarine, so it conserves your oxygen as you dive down to the area that you want to work. And then you can just jump out of it real fast, get to work, and jump back in once your oxygen gets low. It's a very, very useful tool to have if you're trying to survive. Now, because we have a knife, we have the sea glide, we have the tanks, we're going to have a little bit of trouble collecting metal because it takes up a large chunk of your inventory, but we have everything else that we need, so let's go ahead and quantify in our head. We need two glass, so we need two more zinc, we need a battery. Okay, so we're going to need carbon and zinc for that. We're going to need two quartz and two sand and three metal. Let's focus for now on the metal because I think that that's a real target that we can shoot for before the end of the episode. Let's get our sea glide out. I'm going to break this limestone right here. Yeah, there it is. We need a little bit of zinc. We're going to need a little bit of carbon. So three of these will do. That will suffice absolutely perfectly fine. We're going to have to worry about our needs in just a little bit. But for now, I think we're okay. I'm probably going to dive down. And eh, there's another one of those things. I could just get the carbon off of his dead corpse. But I'm going to be nice for right now. I'm going to be a nice guy and just let it go. I don't think we need... Actually, I think we need some more sand. So let's grab some of that. There we go. The next thing we need is quartz. So let's have a look around and see if maybe we can lock down some of this quartz. There's the metal that we're going to be looking for. We need three of that. How's our inventory space looking? We're actually out. All right. Well, we've got the sand. We've got the zinc. We've got salt. Those will convert down. All right. We're a little bit hard up right now. We're a little bit full up. You can always find your space pod or your escape pod by looking to where that little blip is. It shows up no matter where you are on the map, and it's always easy to find. That should be cool, though. I think I'm going to break the episode off. Well, let's find the quartz first, and we'll get all the stuff put together. And I would prefer to make ourselves the sea moth before I quit. This could be a very, very short series, but where is the quartz at? Sometimes it points it out for you because it's actually kind of hard to see sometimes. There's the third piece of metal that we need, but I think we're... Oh, no, it fit. They just moved everything else around. Okay, that's nice that it sorts your inventory to make that happen. Where's the quartz at? There's got to be some quartz around here somewhere. There's emery right there. Did I leave any on the bottom of the ocean, actually? That's a good question. Let me go back over here and see if I left some on the bottom of the ocean. That might speed up the process a little bit. I did, so there's one right there. The other ones look like they may have despawned or something may have happened to them along the way. That's okay though, we can dig up one more corpse without or, I'm sorry, one more quartz without too many problems. Let me refill my oxygen real fast because I always get paranoid about it. And then we'll buy we'll dive back down. You do have to stay on the surface until your oxygen tanks refill. So don't just hit the surface real fast and go back down. It will not serve you the way that you think it will. 
Let's see here. There's got to be some quartz here. It's just difficult to see because it's like these little clear crystals that are laying around all over the place. Every now and again, the game will be very, very kind to you and point it out. But for right now, we also picked up a lot of it. That's the other problem is that I've dug myself a little hole right here. I know I'm not getting attacked right now, am I? Oh, he's collecting the metal. Okay. Don't know why they're so obsessed with metal, but it's something that you've got to learn to deal with along the way. There has got to be some quartz around here somewhere. My god, this is like the biggest lack of quartz I've ever seen. It doesn't help that all the quartz that I dumped under my ship despawned, so... Learning experience, I guess. Don't dump your quartz underneath your ship. Technically, I dumped it on the floor. There's the quartz. I saw it. It flagged it. Where is it? Oh, it's underneath. There it is right there. You see it? It's underneath that seaweed. Now we should be good with everything that we need in order to get the sea moth made. So let's make our way on back to the ship. Once we get there, we will create the sea moth and we will break off the episode. Hopefully the... I, I can't tell if the game's got a memory leak or not or what's going on with it. Every now and again, it just crashes on me and it seems like the performance dies right before. So there's no telling how long this series is going to be. I've gotten a sea moth built in like under 10 minutes. So it shouldn't be too hard to recover if it happens, but it's just kind of like a little operational thing that gets old trying to do it. Let's jump back up in here. Actually, we need the constructor. There. It, no, we need to make the glass first. That's what we needed to do. So let's make our glass. Bam, bam, bomb. There's the glass. We're going to need to make some carbon for our battery, too. There it is. We're looking nice right now. This is going to be pretty sweet. I'm excited about this. Very, very excited about this. I think we have all the things that we need. Let's go make ourselves a sea moth. Where did it go? The constructor's on one of these sides. There it is. Put that away real fast so that it's not using up screen space here. See if I can get on top of the constructor. Sometimes I'm a little bit sketchy about getting on top of it. And from here, we will want to make the sea moth. It spawns it, like, randomly. So just, like, watch out. It'll be around here somewhere. You just kind of got to find it first, though. There it is. I was going to say, it should pop in somewhere. There's our sea moth. So if you want to see it, I will see you in the next episode. Take care, everybody, and hi-do.